f of x, I think we already did this one, I'm not sure. No, not in unit three. f of x is equal to 5x cubed. Yes, 3.1. Uh, 5x cubed minus 3.5x squared. plus 9x minus 6 pi squared. Now, this is something that I see in calculus a lot. A student will look at this problem, and they'll just stare at it. Find the derivative. Find x prime. But what I want you to do with this problem, I want you to sketch it using your graphing calculator. Sketch it on you. Tell me the domain, range, and then I might ask you a couple of questions about f of f prime or f of 4 and f of x is equal to 2 or something like that. In other words, can you interpret the graph? Can you interpret the function? So sketch it out beside your prop work on your Find the derivative in your notes and tell me what you tell me all about the curve. So we take our handy dandy calculator. Y is equal to five X cubed <coughs> minus three point five X squared. Plus 9x minus 6 pi pi squared. I don't know why they do that, but second function, where's pi? There it is. You can tell how much I use calculator. And graph. Hoping to get a better. And it's a cubic function, so you know what. There we go. You know what it looks like. It looks like that. Now the only thing you got to watch out is for this area right in here. It's our standard cubic function, but it's stretched along the x-axis, and it's going to flatten out a whole lot more. So you're going to have to focus in this area right in here. So I'm going to go zoom, and you can do it through the window. I do it through the box. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to focus in here. And if, if you were using the uh, window, you'd go like negative 10 to positive 10 or something like that. How did I what? How did you get that out of the graph? I, I just have a line that goes up. Well, you hit zoom zero. Zoom zero. You got it? Yeah. That's so weird. I know. Well, it's the 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 uh, domain and range. They have to set it to where you can see it better. That's why you hit zero. Now here's the function if you blow it up right in here. And you see it's, it's below the x-axis here and it's above the x-axis after about two. So again, you have to blow it up a little bit to see what to, whatever. But the whole thing is there's a max and a min. Now you can hit trace and you got to watch that. You got to watch that y. 
because your max and min is determined upon the y. Hit trace and just start back from here. You see y is negative 68, negative 80. It's starting to get to zero. It gets to zero and then it gets to, there we go. We cross, I'm sorry, not at two, but whatever that comes out to be. Looks like, yeah, at two. Somewhere after 2.2, around 2.3, we cross over, all right? And that's the transition point. And, of course, you keep going, keep going, keep going. The domain is negative infinity to what? Positive infinity. Why? Because you can put any number in here. But the problem comes when you take the derivative. The derivative, people sit there and go, 5x squared, yeah, let's say it'll be 15x squared minus blah, 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 blah. And then they get here and they just stare at it. <clears throat> It's still a constant, right? It's a constant. So if it's a constant, what does it come out to be? And you got to remember that. That's zero, okay? So it cancels out. So your derivative is f prime of x is equal to 15, really, 15x squared minus 7x plus 9. Now, if I asked you what f prime of 2 is, you would plug 2 into this. And that would. if I get asked you what f of 1 is. I'm sorry. You, you said if a constant, um, if it is constant, the derivative is 0? Yeah. Uh, how did... I don't know what that means. All right. Well, first of all, pi, always plug in in your head three. Yeah. Whenever you're in calculus, plug in pi for three. Okay. What's three t What's three squared? Nine. nine. Nine times six is what? 54. What's the derivative of 54? Zero. Zero. See, pi is a number. A number times a number is another number. Yeah. And remember what I told you. What remember what I told you? Always do this. When in doubt, always put an x to the what? Zero right here. Because here is x to the first, so we've got three, two, one, zero. Now let's do the derivative. Zero times six is what? Zero. And then zero times pi is what? 0, x to the negative 1, and that goes out. So no matter how you do it, even if you do it long ways and put a 0 power here, it'll work itself out. Okay? Now they give you another one. Again, it's just basic derivatives. This one is n of x is equal to negative point zero 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 eight two x cubed plus point zero five nine x squared and yes, you use your calculator on this. Plus, unless you're Rain Man, 0 0.183 x plus 34.42. Crank that out.
Now, n prime of x is equal to, well, I'm not even going to try it. This negative point something, 3 times point zero 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 eight two. Dang old 16.246. So that's going to be 0 0.00246 0 x squared plus point and 0 0.059 times 2 is 0.118 x plus I'll do the last one, 0.183. And what happens to the last one? It's a constant, it goes out. So there is your derivative. Now, in 3.1, it's called simple rate of change formulas. What does that mean? Simple derivatives. That's what it means. Because what did I tell you the derivative was? The equation of the slope at a point. So rate of change is slope. So you're finding the slope at each of these points. Now in this case, it's not slope because it's a square, and that's a different function because of the cube. All right. When, again, when you're dealing with cubes, you're dealing with a different animal than with a parabola. All right. And most of the time, you're going to be dealing with parabolas in business, whether it be a logarithm or whether it be a rational exponent or whether it be a uh, parabola itself. Okay. Now, in one of your homework pages, I'm just giving you an example. They're telling you to find the derivative of a number. They're telling you to find the derivative of x to the fifth. They're telling you to find the derivative of t. Here's one that I put on calculus test and people miss it. T to the 2 pi. Take the derivative of that. Well, 2 times 3 is 6. 6t six and 2 pi is, what I say, 6 minus 1 is 5. Now, of course, you're going to get decimals because pi is not 3. But when you put 3 in your brain, what does that do? It changes it to a problem that you can actually do. And then you just go back and instead of 3, you put in pi. So in this case, that would be 2 uh, t to the what? 2 times 3 is 6. And then that would be 6 t to the fifth. Something like that. Now you go back. Put a dot here because y'all think I'm, that's dang old proximate, proximate there. Okay. Go back and instead of 3, you put in pi and then that, those numbers will go right there. So they're just testing you to see if you know how, if you know what you're doing. Um, 0.5 x squared is another one. Take the derivative of that one. Um, the one we just did, that 5x cubed, we did that one. Here's another one they give you. Negative uh, 9 over x squared. Well, we went over those the first unit, remember? I mean, the second unit. With, okay, what do we do? Fractions and radicals you need to rewrite. Write that down. Fractions and radicals you need to rewrite. It's kind of like a little jingle. Fractions and radicals you need to rewrite. So how would we rewrite? Say that real quick. How would we re rewrite this? Negative 9 x to the what? You see where people have problems with taking the derivative. They just don't know what to do. Okay? And then that's what? To the what? I heard 18x to uh, negative 3. And do you leave it like that? That would be 18 over x to the third. Good. How did it get to 18x to negative 3? 
Use the derivative law. Yeah. Right here, negative 2, negative two times negative 9 is positive 18. And then you minus 1, and that will give you negative 3. Okay? Your final answer is right here. And that's the one they give you. Now, I'm going to give you this one, and I want you to work this one, because this is one that, you know, you might have to rewrite a little bit. And if you can't do it, you just write yourself down as a failure. F of X three X squared plus one over X. Did you grade your paper? Did you make a hundred? <laughs> well, I'll grade it for you. I'll make sure you fail. Now, some of y'all are staring at it. Orb of confusion. Oh. Is it a fraction or a radical? It's a fraction. So you got to do what? Rewrite it. First thing I would do is put parentheses around the numerator, and then I'd bring the x up, and then you, another little thing will click and say, oh, I need to do this. No, throw your pencil down. Quit. Now, why did I put 1x to the first? Because I've got to distribute. And when you distribute, what operation do you use when you distribute? You multiply. And when you multiply exponents, what do you do? You add them. So that's why I put a 1 there, because you've got to add that negative 1 to those two uh, exponents. I'm trying to knock some cobwebs loose. Okay. So now we distribute the x to the, I'm sorry, what? x is 0 for the 1, 1x. Oh, I'm sorry. I went ahead and, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. I suck. I might as well, I'm a failure. 3x to the negative, I mean, to the second, times x to the negative 1, plus... 1x to the 0, x times x to the negative 1. Now we've got, take our handy dandy highlighter, and we've got the same bases here. Same bases here. And we haven't went over the exponential rules, but you should know those. And when you have, you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So f of x, after we get through manipulating it, comes out to be, what is 2 plus a negative 1? 1. And 1x to the negative 1. So now we use our handy-dandy derivative law. And 1 times 3, f prime of x, is equal to, 1 times 3 is 3, x, 1 minus 1 is 0, plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. x, well, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So now let's clean it up. 3x to the 0 is 3. Okay, hold on. And then that minus, and then that's going to be x of 1 over x to the what? 2. To the second. That's your final answer. Or negative 1 over x to the 2 plus 3, either one. Okay, where's your question?
Phil, Phil, go ahead and ask if you got it, because we're fixing to move into another part of derivative laws. So far, the only derivative law that we've covered is the power rule. All right? Now, why are they doing all these? They're telling you to manipulate the problem, to reorganize it, to rewrite it, so you can take the derivative. They're basically getting you warmed up, I guess. Okay? So that's a good problem. You might see that one again. Hint, hint. Now, this one is really hard. New rules, 3.2. F of X is equal to E to the X. F prime of X, okay, can y'all might need to really concentrate here. F prime of X is E to the X. All right, so this one might stump you on the test. Will I put this on a test? Yes, I will. <laughs> and people will get it wrong? Yes, they do. They kind of they think up all conjure up all kinds of different answers. This is the only time you see the derivative equal to the function. Three point uh, three point two is called exponential logarithmic and cy cyclic rate of change formulas, or exponential logarithmic and cyclic derivatives. I love how they change. They they dub me the, the word derivative down to rate of change, and they keep using rate of change. I didn't know you spoke Latin. Huh? I didn't yeah. Know you spoke Latin. Spoke Latin. What do you mean? Latin. Just sounds good. <laughs> All right. So there's a derivative, and then the next one is the f of x is equal to b to the x. f of x is equal to b to the x, the derivative of a rational exponent is equal to the natural log of b times b to the x. The natural log of b times b to the x. Now, the easiest, another easy one to remember, this one you don't see very much, but you will in this class because of business, because this is a business tool right here, an exponential. Um, you're not going to see this a lot in business in the real world. You'll see this before you'll see this. All right. Um, the next one is real easy because I've already showed it to you. F of X is equal to, do they use log? No, they use natural log. Natural log of x or log of x. F prime of x is equal to what? Anybody know it? 1 over x. <laughs> Never mind. You, you were thinking something else, right? Yeah, it's like ln. I know what you were thinking of. And then the two trigonometrics. Now, a lot of you say, well, I thought we didn't have trig. Well, this is the only trig that you're going to see in here because of the business application and the sine wave and the cosine wave. So f of x is real easy. Sine of x is the cosine of x. The derivative of sine is the cosine. f prime of x. is equal to the cosine. And I'm going to show you the chain rule because I know I'm probably in unit 5 by now, but I'm going to show you the chain rule because you need the chain rule to do the sine and cosine. So, and I'll show you why. They'll probably show you in chapter 6. F prime of x is equal to cosine of x. The derivative of cosine is the negative sine. Now, a lot of you may say, how do you remember that? Well, the easy way to remember, the derivative of the sine is the cosine, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. Say it like that, and you'll get it right every time. The antiderivatives, complete opposite. 
we don't even want to go there yet. So negative sign. I'm sorry. So write those down. These are important. So actually, you could take all of this. just a little bit and move it down a little bit and I don't know where we learned the derivative law but the derivative of f of x I meant the power rule is equal to ax to the n power ax to the n power is equal to n times a x to the n minus 1. Okay, that's the first one we did. So right now, these are all your rules that you're responsible for on this uh, Unit 3 test. Now, if there's any place in calculus or any place in mathematics that is step by step, in other words, if you don't know the first step, you're going to flunk the second test, that's this, derivatives. It's progressive. You've got to re remember everything about the derivatives. So when we get to the chain rule, you've got to remember everything above it plus the chain rule. Because if you don't, then you just might as well not even show up for the test because you're going to, they, 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 they intertwined. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and cover the chain rule. And I may be getting out of sequence, but I really don't care because you're not going to be able to do these unless you do the chain rule. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the chain rule. And the chain rule is going to be f of x, and make sure you put chain rule out here. I'm not going to, but you need to. Is equal to, I'm going to say a times x minus or plus b. It doesn't matter what's in there. It doesn't really matter there to the n power is equal to f prime of x is equal to, you do just like you did before, the power rule stays with this. There's only one added feature, and that's n times a times x plus b to the n minus 1. Anybody know what the extra step is? what's inside the derivative and I'm going to put the prime right there of x plus b okay not b prime but let me put that on the outside of the parentheses in other words whatever's inside that's you got to take the derivative of what's inside and we'll do a couple of those now Right now in Unit 3, those you are responsible for all of these. So will you see the power rule in your homework for Unit 3? Yes. Will you see a lot of these? Yes. Because you've got to know how to do it. Uh -huh. It'll make more sense when I actually do a problem. Okay, so we're going to do some of these. I'm going to focus mainly on um, the power rule and the sine and cosine and the chain rule for the first few minutes of these. Let's see this thing. Yes. This is sine. Yep, is equal to that. And the cosine is equal to that. And then you got a times x plus b to the n power. That's the chain rule. What is the ln? What is that? Natural log or log. What's that equation called? It's just the derivative of the log. Okay. It's not anything special. This one has a name, power rule, and this one has a name, chain rule. 
This is trig functions. This is natural log. This is exponential. And this is e to the x. So they don't have any special names. Okay. Well, they probably do, but I ain't. You don't need to know. All right, so let's do one. Let's start with the chain rule. Two times x squared plus six times the raised to the fifth power. It's about as basic as you get right here. You'll get a bunch of these on homework, five or six. Do you simplify it after you? Yes, simplify as much as possible, yes. Is that I'm sorry, say again. Do you want us to like boil after? Yes. Well, you don't have well, no, not not to the no. No, not to the fourth power, no. Just just make sure you take the derivative of what's inside. That's what I mean by simplify. No, I don't want you to do f x no. That'd be a pain in the rear. I didn't notice when you asked that, I didn't notice it'd be to the fourth power. And for some of you that have seen the chain rule before, you know how to do it, and it's no problem. For some of you that haven't, this will help. So here we go. Take the 5, multiply it by the 2. 5 times 2. Then rewrite x squared plus 6. Then take 5 minus 1. And all that's the power rule. Then you take your inside x squared plus 6, and we're going to take the derivative of that. So that's going to give us 10 x squared plus 6, quantity to the fourth power, and then the derivative of x squared is what? 2x because 6 is what? Zero. 0. And your final answer is 20x times x squared plus 6 to the fourth power. So basically all you do is just times the outside. The power rule times the inside, okay. the derivative of the inside. You don't. You do not even want to see the chain rule written out in mathematical, because you'll be confused. Okay. You take the five, multiply it by what's in out front, rewrite this minus one, and then take the derivative of what's inside. This right here is what's inside. You got to remember that because after about three or four problems. You're going to start saying what's inside, what's inside, what's inside. This is what's inside. The derivative of that is 2x plus 0, which is 2x. All right, let's try another. Yes? So basically, I know you're trying to say it's 2x times 10, and then just leave it like that. Yeah, you can do it. Yeah, I did the long version. I did it step by step for the person that's never done it before. That's why I did it like this. That's why I was just Okay. Let's try a nerd. <coughs> two times. Let's go with negative two. X squared plus two X plus six to the one half power. Now, another way of seeing this is f of x is equal to negative 2 times what? The square root of x squared plus 2x plus 6. And, of course, if you saw it like this, the first thing you would do is rewrite it because it's a radical.
So f prime of x, no, I don't want to write it like that. Let's go down here and do it. f prime of x, I'm going to write this one out again with each step. So that'd be 1 half times a negative 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 6 to the 1 half minus 1. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the derivative. I'm not going to write with a, with a prime. I'm just going to take the derivative. It's going to be 2x plus what? All right, now you can pull that 2x plus 2. You got a 2 in there in common, don't you? So you can pull that 2 out and put it out here. So I'm going to do that next. You got to get used to pulling out terms because if you can get something to cancel out, do it. So I'm going to go out, I'm going to write this one out front out here, and I'm going to say 2 times x plus 1. And then I'm going to put the rest of it together. 1 half times negative 2. A lot of people say, well, how can you do that? What's 2 times 3? The same as 3 times what? 2. This is multiplication. This is multiplication. This is multiplication. So does it matter where I put the 2x plus 2? No. I can put it anywhere. Okay. Times x squared plus 2x plus 6 to the 1 half minus 2 halves. Well, we can go ahead and do this. What's negative 2? Divide, I meant negative 2 times 2 divided by 2. Negative 2. And then you got your x plus 1. And then you got x squared plus 2x plus 6 to the negative what? I'm sorry. Negative 1 half. I'm having a brain bubble. Negative 1 half. And that means that all this can go where? Downstairs because all this is over what? One, so this can come downstairs. Somebody tell me right quick, how much of this was calculus? Huh? The only part of calculus is going from this part right here to this part right here. The rest of it's what? Algebra. If you suck at algebra, you're going to suck at calculus, period. So we're brushing up again. So here we go. F prime of X. It'd be a whole lot easier to do class if I didn't have to do it with a mouse. Negative 2. X plus 1. Over. And you can write that as the square root of X squared plus 2X plus 6. And that's good enough for government work. Now, you could multiply and then just give you a L.A. Um, radical in the top. So just leave it like that. The square root of x squared plus 2x plus 6. Now, let me take my handy-dandy highlighter. Well, let's see. Let me erase this. Let's see, it's probably not going to let me do it, but no, I didn't think it would. <sighs> Negative 2, square root of what was it, x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 6? And then f of x is 
equals negative 2 x squared plus 2x plus 6 to the 1 half power. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because you need to see that this part right here is your calculus right there. The rest of it's algebra. So if you've ever been in a calculus class and you had no idea what was going on, chances are, take it from me, you sucked at algebra. Or you have got to get better at algebra, one of the two. Because that was what was wrong with me. That's why I had a hard time with calculus. Okay. So let's do a nerd. And we'll move on to the, well, I'll go ahead and do that now. How about, and you might have trouble with this one because you don't know what to do because it's fairly, I'll shut up. Sign of, well, I'm going to go ahead and do four times the sign of 4x. Four times the sine of four x. I'm sorry, what? I didn't hear you. I'm the master of this universe. I can, I can yawn. I can sneeze and I can cough. <laughs> First thing you need to do is suffice. Uh, <laughs> learn how to talk the first thing you need to do is find out what's inside that's what's inside so you could rewrite it as f of x is equal to 4 times the sine of parentheses 4x that might help you out a little bit I mean, you don't have to write it like that, but it might help you out because that tells you that what's inside is 4x. So therefore, the derivative of what's inside is what? 4, Hubert. Thank you. And just for those that can put 2 and 2 together, what does that 4 in front of the sign tell you? What did the 2 do to the parabola? And the 6 do to the parabola in front of 6x squared. What did it do? It compressed it, right? Made it what? I'm sorry. Wider. No. Skinnier. Yeah, skinnier. Compressed it along or stretched it along the y-axis. So what does that 4 in front of the sine do? Compresses it. So the sine wave that looks like this will now look like this. The compression factor is always going to be in front of your function. Always. So, f prime of x is going to be 4 times the cosine, derivative of sine is the cosine of 4x, times the derivative of what's inside, and the derivative is 4, and therefore, Your derivative is 16 cosine of 4x. All right, let's try one more. And, and I'll just do the right here f of x is equal to one half, oops, negative one half the cosine of 
3x. Be careful. There's a twist on this one. Okay, so f prime of x is going to be, well, 3 times negative 1 half. Oops. Times, what is the derivative of the cosine? Negative. The negative sine, and there's your twist. Well, that's actually not negative, but what? Positive. Negative 1. You're right. You're right. Positive. That's a negative 1, actually. So negative 1 times this is positive. You're right. And that would be 3 halves sine of 3x. and you feel good about yourself. So there's not a lot of algebra involved with the sine and the cosines. You just have to... Sorry, that's, just a rule that that's the chain rule. You just got to know what's inside. The secret to the chain rule is knowing what's inside. If you know what's inside, well, and you can take the derivative of what's inside. Now, that takes us up to... takes us up to 3.3 because they're doing composition of functions in 3.3 and 3.4. We've already done that. So, But what they're doing is they're taking a composition like, right quick I'm going to show you one, f of x is equal to x squared plus 2. g of x is equal to x plus 1. I want you to give me f composed of g prime of x. So that means you're going to plug in g into x, I mean into f of x, and then I want the derivative. It's not that big of a deal. Because I told you how to do compose. That means you write F with a big set of what? Parentheses. And then this guy goes into there. Oh, what are we doing? Algebra. So that's X plus 1. So now we got X plus 1. So that's going to be X squared, shortcut number 1, plus 2X plus 1, plus 2, and that's going to give us f of x, f composed of g of x, is equal to x squared plus 2x plus what? Now, what do we do? We want what? Derivative. So now I'll take the derivative of that, and that gives you 2x plus what? So 
So hopefully some of you are starting to see that calculus is not that difficult. What's the difficult part? Remembering all the what? All the algebra. That's the difficult part. And that's why I spent so long going over the algebra section. Hopefully that hopefully y'all feel like, okay, I can do this. So I'm probably going to put three or four sections up. And then we'll go over any of your questions tomorrow. Okay, let me get the roll. And after I get the roll, I will look at questions on test, okay? That's why I cut class at 1130.